Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Melissa, but subscribers can call me Missy. Today's video is going to be a little bit different. I don't get a lot of views on my art videos, so today I thought we would just goof off and maybe do a little podcast format where we talk about historic pet portraits while you watch me paint a pet portrait. I am joined today by my husband and his credentials for this video are that he was available and willing to talk with me about some of these pet portraits. Okay, I think that getting started, it would be a good idea to talk a little bit about our own pets. What was your favorite pet that you ever had? Go! The favorite pet that I had was a husky. Husky, I think a Malamute. I, I don't know the breeds all together very well, but it was a Husky and it was a big dog, but we got him as a puppy and he had two black patches on his eyes. And so we named him Bandit. Cute. Okay. But he was a biter. Oh. So he fit the name. That's unfortunate. Yeah. <laughs> that your favorite pet at you and the neighbors <laughs> everybody I don't know how to respond to that how about with your favorite pet okay I don't know which pet is my favorite I did have a hamster and his name was Nicholas so I feel like I really love the name Nicholas for a hamster did you um, call him Nicholas Cage when he was in his pet in his cage I didn't know about Nicholas Cage because I was too young to care um, but yeah, I know it was an opportunity lost. <laughs> so now that we've talked a little bit about our own pets, let's jump right into pet articles. So our first article is from the hancockgallery.co.uk and it is titled The History of Animal Portraits. So it starts out by saying, Throughout time, animals have appeared as subject matter in paintings, sculptures, and prints. The oldest paintings of animals date back to around 19,000 years ago, when over 600 paintings were found in Lascaux, which I, I think I probably butchered that, but <laughs> southern France is located deep inside caves. I think I think it's probably just Lesko. So the dog selfies and the funny cat videos clogging up your phone aren't a modern phenomenon but a symptom of the human condition. We can't help but capture the world around us whether using cave paintings or iPhones. So true. So true. So true. <laughs> In the time between cave paintings and bored ape yacht club Animals' place in the world has changed a lot. Ancient people's connection to animals was paramount, providing food, clothing, tools, shelter, etc., as well as predators providing competition and danger. Today, our relationship with animals is divided and often heavily influenced by culture. However, the general theme the world over is that we praise and cherish some animals whilst farming and slaughtering others. Art is the perfect conduit with which to learn about the perceptions, treatments, and importance of animals throughout history. Um, yeah, so I would say that culturally how animals are treated is uh, highly dependent on where you're coming from and your intention with the animal, right? Excuse me, sir, what are your intentions with my animal? I feel like one of the interesting animals, though, in that situation is rabbits because we simultaneously find it socially acceptable to eat rabbits and also socially acceptable to have them as just family pets. I think that might be because in so many fantasy settings, rabbit stew is very often talked about. And so it's regular to consider rabbit meat as a consumable item, as opposed to you would never like, I've never heard of a dog stew. So you feel like that I'm being accurate then when I say that, like, people don't think that eating rabbits is weird. But the other thing is, is that, like, in our personal culture, people don't eat rabbits regularly, right? True. Like, I don't think that you can just go to a grocery store and buy rabbit meat. 
I don't even know if you can go to a butcher and buy rabbit meat, but it's possible. I know that there are um, farms that raise rabbits for consumption. But... Maybe I'm not going to like the most fanciest restaurants where they serve rabbit meals, but I feel like they would serve rabbit meals at fancy restaurants. At the very least, it would probably be expensive. Yeah. I know I had like a rabbit paella when I was in Spain back in high school, which I never stopped talking about. <laughs> animals as symbols, the article goes on. Due to our relationship and history with them, animals have become symbolic. All cultures throughout history have regarded specific animals as representing power and wisdom, to be respected or feared, with supernatural counterparts and even gods. Lots of the characteristics we associate with animals have been promoted by art through history. Snakes are sly, lions are proud, bulls are strong, and owls are wise. What animals represented was of great significance. Enemy, or no, not enemies, ermines, or white minks, were once a symbol of purity and chastity. Birds often had links to souls and redemption. It was believed that a robin gained its red breast when a drop of Christ's blood fell onto the bird as it plucked a thorn from its head to ease his suffering. Caged birds were often used as a metaphor for the soul caged in the mortal body. I had never heard that story about the robin. Or the birds being caged being a metaphor for a soul in a body. Very true. Very true. Let us ponder on this for a moment. Yeah, I don't know. That, that one about Christ is really interesting to me because I'd never heard it and um, we grew up somewhat religious. I wonder whether there are other... significantly religious. Yeah. I don't know what I'm saying. Anyways, it comment down below if you had heard before about the Robin Jesus connection. I found that interesting. Especially since our last name is Robinson. I feel like amb Ambibles. <laughs> uh, it just... You bringing up that our last name was Robinson reminds me that you didn't let me name our second child Damien Wayne. Yeah, Because well. <laughs> Damien Wayne was Robin, the son of Batman. Oh my god. And it would have been perfect! Oh my goodness. Okay, we're, that we're moving on. That is staying in the episode. <laughs> so the next section of the article is called Pet Portraits, which is actually why we're reading this article in the first place. So... What about the paintings of animals without the symbolism? Animals that don't signify much more than their owner's love for them. This tends to arise when humans had not only domesticated animals, but began to keep them solely for their companionship and affection. This is believed to have begun during the Renaissance, after pressure from the church against animal keeping for its pagan connotations was relaxed. I feel like that's kind of like a Western perspective. I don't know if there are other parts of the world that would have embraced animal companionship before Europe, that right? Is, that's such a weird concept that animal companionship would have been considered a pagan uh sort of act well yeah i mean if you look at like the idea of witches and their familiars right like ooh, you have a pet you must be a witch <laughs> i guess that's true okay moving on royalty and the upper class well why don't you read it well royalty and the upper class often kept pets for nothing other than companionship and these aristocrats would often commission portraits of their most cherished animals which brings us to what you're doing today, which is doing a painting for your dad, for yep. his birthday, of yep. your sister's cat that he absconded with. <laughs> By the Victoria era, I feel like that should say Victorian, but maybe that's just my perspective as a uneducated person. By the Victoria era, this was considered common practice and pets would be regularly photographed and seen as members of the family. The oldest example of this was a dog mosaic found in the house of the tragic poet in Pompeii. Perhaps we've been capturing our, furry's friend, our furry friends' likenesses for longer than we think. I wonder if that concept of being seen as a member of the family is a 
common or is a current perception or a current idea being pushed upon a historic reference right i'm not saying that this uh pompeii dog mosaic thing didn't exist or that the uh house of the poet did not care about the dog being portrayed but i'm wondering if it is our current uh ideology saying oh it's a dog son right saying that they're a part of the family mm. i think that people have always been people and they would have formed a strong connection to their animal pets whether or not the dog was working right and i think that it also depends on the people right some people are able to form stronger connections emotionally to their pets than other people however i did look up this dog mosaic and it is the equivalent of a beware of dog sign i think there were other mosaic frescoes that weren't beware of dog signs but this one as i recall was a beware of dog sign. it's kind of interesting to see that this was in Pompeii. Yeah, it's a pretty it's a pretty neat little mosaic, honestly. I think yeah, it's really like cool. Yeah, like it's and looking at it, it is very obviously a dog. Yeah. With some beefy shoulders. I mean, it's supposed to be a guard arms. dog, right? That's, That's true. intimidating. That dog's flashing his pecs. He's saying, "I've got the the muscles behind my uh bark." Well, and back then they were um the animals that were bred for protection were very much so bred for that purpose. For beef monsters. Well, I mean, they <laughs> talk about the dogs that were bred for hunting wolves, that sort of thing. That's madness. Continuing, contemporary animal portraits. While the practice of pet portraits may have increased dramatically through the years, it has subsequently fallen from its place in high art due to the ubiquity of cameras and lower prices for commissioned paintings. More recently, we've seen the use of animals as symbols in modern art. Picasso's obsession with bulls and Hearst's use of real animals is a prime example of this. However, artists like Justin Coburn carry the torch for more traditional expressions of animal motifs, widely known for this emotive and romantic representations of animals. His, sorry, not this. Coburn's graceful and almost intangible portraits of animals harkens back to a time of paramount religious connotation and begs question of man's relationship with nature. It seems as long as art exists, humans will always be using it to explore the connection between man and beast. I really like Justin Coburn's painting of the tapir. All right. Well, thank you for listening. If you're still listening, uh, congratulations. You have a high pain tolerance, and I do commend you, good sir, at, or or person, good good human, madam or pet. <laughs> If you liked anything about that video, please be sure to like, press the like button. And if you would like to see more of what I do, I do art, I do sewing, I do home improvement, and I just do some silliness. And if you'd like to follow along, uh, please do. And do I will see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.